Building this R1T into the ultimate EV off-road adventure mobile has proven to be at least twice as hard as any gas-powered truck we've ever built. And in episode two of this build series, we're gonna go into what all those challenges were and what we did to solve them. So let's start with the absolute biggest thing that everybody thinks about, everyone talks about when we talk about EVs, and that's gonna be range. So range was considered in a lot of different ways with this build, everything from the tire choice. So like on a normal truck that we build, we're gonna put 37 inch mud terrains and we're gonna cut the wheel wells up. On a truck like this, that's not possible. Cause if you start seeing a 10, 15, 20% reduction in range from tires alone, you're gonna start cutting that range down from usable off-road adventure distances down to maybe doing your morning commute to the coffee shop. And the goal with this build isn't just to have a vehicle that you can drive on gnarly off-road trails, it's still keeping this vehicle as a competent daily driver because this is a super high-end luxury truck. Before we go into the modifications on this vehicle so far, let's talk about who this truck is for really briefly. And we do a full in-depth breakdown of the vehicle in the episode one. That'll be linked in the description below if you wanna see kind of performance metrics, how this thing drives, all the in-depth analysis. But in terms of like who we really think that this product is perfect for, it's for the person who lives in an urban environment that has access to charging infrastructure, that is an early adopter of technology, and wants to be able to use this for weekend exploration, for kind of lower stress, longer trips, where you have more time to charge. Being able to still keep this thing as a fully functional daily driver, have it be your daily commuter, but still have it be this lifestyle accessory that enables you to have great experiences. So to that end, we can't just go in and shoehorn 37 inch mud terrains on this thing. We can't go put a camper on here that's 16 inches tall and decreases range by 40% because once you get out into the wilderness, there is no charging infrastructure. So you're reliant on yourself to get to where you're going and back to charging infrastructure on your own. So let's jump right into what we did, starting from the bottom up. So right here, you'll see that we have a replacement set of Bridgestone duelers to replace the original Pirellis. And these are a 275-65 R20. They're slightly more aggressive than the stock Pirelli. They still get great fuel mileage. They're totally silent on the road, but they also are a little bit beefier than the stock tire. But we don't wanna to go to a full mud terrain. We don't really wanna to go to a Toyo on this yet. We might try it out later, but compromising that on-road drivability. Also, this thing canyon carves like a beast. So being able to drive this thing super fast on the street, if you want to, is really nice to keep that performance where a mud terrain or even all terrain is gonna have a lot less traction. The next big thing that we did to the truck is this camper install. And there's a bunch of things that are specific to this camper. We have a few videos kind of walking around doing full in-depth analysis of how this thing mounts, all the interfaces. But really, at the end of the day, keeping it light and keeping it low are the two major design considerations on this camper. So. We're only about six and a quarter inches off the sheet metal. We're about 27 inches above the bed rail to the top of the camper. And what that means is we're keeping our center of gravity as low as possible on the truck. So daily drivability, body roll in corners on the street, off-road ability, keeping that weight low. Even though there is a ton of battery weight down here, you still will feel heavy roof loads on a mid-sized truck. The other thing too is that low overall stack height is gonna allow you to still fit in places like parking garages. So if you do live in an urban environment, if you do have a residential garage door that you wanna put your vehicle into, this thing in full low mode is still not that small of a vehicle. This is not a, this is not a Tesla Model 3. In full low mode, we are about six foot four inches from the ground to the top of the camper. That's great because you can leave your factory crossbars on and still fit in like a six foot six garage, which is really, really common in an urban environment. And keeping that as low as possible, in addition to the roll center, in addition to the overall stack height, maximizes aerodynamics. So we've shipped at the time of filming this video, which is a few weeks before it's gonna get released, we've already shipped 10 of these campers. And our customers are self-reporting about a seven to 10% decrease in range overall which we've found is super livable. And since kind of joining and getting involved in the Riven community, we've had a bunch of questions lately from folks that are saying, hey, how is this different than like an iCamp or SkyCamp Mini on the back of my truck, which is a great product, or the Yakima tent that Rivian sells. And those are typically mounted to the cross rails below cab height. And while you will see a three to 5% decrease in range, which is not nothing, um, one of the big issues is that you're gonna completely block rear visibility with a product like that. So being able to have the visibility out of the back of the camper and still have full ability to see through the camper at all times when you're driving down the road is a huge advantage of this product. The other thing about the GoFast camper is it's designed to be left on all the time because there's a lot of times when you might want your camp set up, you're actually gonna use it. Whether you're gonna be hauling gear home from the hardware store, whether you're throwing bikes in the bed of the truck and wanna be able to lock it up, 
Uh, putting a dog in the back, I mean, you're sure not gonna put a dog underneath a tonneau cover. So if you're worried about the drivability of this camper blocking any view, you still have great visibility out of the rearview mirror if you option it with the front and rear windows. The other cool thing about the Rivian is that it does have those lane change assist cameras. So when you do press the turn signal stock over, you get a view of what's behind you out this way. So you don't even really need a side window here because you have that in the dash. And honestly, that side view camera is gonna be better than any topper will ever allow you to see out of the side. The camper has a lot of really good daily drivable, daily usable utility. Being able to have that much more secure storage, that much lockable storage, especially nowadays with all the vehicle theft, all the automotive theft, you don't want your super high-end road bike just sitting on a bed rack on top of your truck, exposed to the elements. Throw it inside and lock it up. So even the lighting kit in the camper that's amazing at camp might even be more useful as your daily driver. So if you're in a parking lot at night, trying to look at something, talk to people, kind of hang out around it, turn that lighting kit on, creates an amazing space to hang out. Also allows you to have like a place where if you're loading the truck at night or working on something on the tailgate, you have incredible visibility at all times, even when you're not on a camping trip. And just so you have some raw data from real world use on this setup with these tires is a 2023 quad motor adventure pack truck with the camper on the back. And oftentimes with the crossbars and my surf bag on the roof, I'm seeing an average of about 1.82 to 1.85 miles per kilowatt hour over the last 2,000 miles, which is honestly pretty good because I don't drive this thing slow and I live at the top of a 3,000 foot mountain that goes down to sea level every single day. So being able to go mob on this truck, drive up to my house, drive back down and almost be at that two miles per kilowatt hour mark is pretty phenomenal. All that to say, the GoFast camper is meant to be left on all the time. So if you're doing a beach trip with the family, and even if you're just going for the day, you're not camping overnight, being able to set it up and have a tree fort, being able to go upstairs, hang out with your wife, go watch the sunset from the tent area, sitting downstairs in cabana mode. Having this as a daily drivable system is killer. I mean, I work remotely, so being able to take Zoom calls in the bed of the truck while camped out at a parking lot during the day has been a daily occurrence for me. I personally own a 2024 Ford Raptor, was my daily driver until I got this at the house to test for a couple of weeks. I have only taken that on one off-roading trip. Out, out of the last 14 days, I've driven it one day. So this has been the best daily I think I've ever used and having a camper on the back of it just makes it even more functional as a daily driver. Like yes, you will see a seven to 10 percent decrease in range, but you will also gain daily drivable benefits, which is a huge, huge, huge advantage because now you have secure storage. Now you have things that aren't going to get covered in rain, dirt, dust, pollen, whatever it is, loaded in the back, locked up and safe. So keeping access to all the exterior buttons, whether it's the tailgate, whether it's the gear hatch, without having to pop open the side panel, unlock the lock, open the side, is super convenient. If you just wanna go grab something really quick, if you wanna go drop the tailgate really quick, you just press a button and you're in. So back to the overall build here and kind of what we're trying to accomplish and keeping this thing as a daily driver that can still get used for adventures that's specifically designed for the owners of this product in the way that we believe Rivian intended this truck to work. We've also put a full goose gear modular system in the back of the prototype for this truck. And what that is, is that's the front bulkhead storage. It's got two lengthwise benches and then some crossover sections. We've been running it with the front bulkhead and one leg to kind of make an L-shaped bench dinette in the back, which has been super efficient. The other really cool thing about that system though, is that it's easy to remove. So I took it out this morning, it took me about 15 minutes start to finish to be able to pull the whole system out of the back and still get this truck back to being a fully functional truck bed. So to kind of sum up where we're at with this build and where we're at with the use case, a lot of people think, too much about the 1% use case. It's like, how am I gonna get that extra 40 miles? How do I bring a jerry can with two gallons of gas on a rotopax that's constantly mounted to the outside of my vehicle, constantly pulling a mile per gallon off of my Tacoma? That, that's not what we're trying to do here. What we're trying to do here is create a thing that works for the 99, that will work amazingly well for the 1% use case. So how do we build this truck as something that keeps your daily driver as an incredibly competent vehicle while still allowing you to go on those off-road adventures. And Rivian's done a great job of that. The adjustable height suspension modes, the ability to have independently controlled wheels on the quad motor to get traction in any scenario, all of the fun rally modes that this thing has, it rips. I mean, this truck works great. So what we have done so far keeps all of that functionality. The antenna still works underneath the camper for the assisted driving modes on the highway. That's what this video is about. The episode two of this build is about what that competent daily needs to be, how far we wanna go on that front. So externally, there's not a lot more we wanna do. I think doing some exterior lighting and doing that in clever ways that won't hurt range, but 
honestly, this truck is incredibly capable. So the next episode of this build series is going to go way more into depth about actually going on those adventures. But this one was entirely built to tell you what is it like to live with this thing. If it's meant to be left on here all the time, how livable is it? How do you make sure that you're getting use out of this thing? It's an expensive investment. It's a nice piece of kit. How do you use it every single time you go out? How do you use it when you go to the grocery store? So you're not just amortizing this cost amongst the couple of times a year you might get out on a big adventure. You're using this thing every single day. And that's where our customers historically see value in our product is being able to use it on a daily setup. Yes, you can easily remove this thing. It'll only take you about half an hour to take it off, but we don't want you to. We designed it specifically not to. You totally can, but keeping the utility on this allows you to get the most value possible out of the product that we designed to stay on your vehicle. So if you wanted to optimize your build for camping on days when you're doing 30 mile trips after trailing your truck to Moab and you put 37s and a spindle lift on this thing with a giant slide in camper, you could totally do that. But our goal is to create products that allow you to have completely functional daily drivable situations. So we don't have to have an extra set of wheels and an extra set of tires on this thing. Let's just use the tires that we daily drive for adventure. So the next episode will be on those adventures, on that off-road testing. Maybe we'll get this thing off the ground a little bit and we want to know what you want to see. So what kind of questions do you have for the off-road use of this build? What kind of questions do you have for the 1%? Or are there, any, are there any questions that we didn't answer about the 99% use case, the daily driver use case? So let us know in the comments. If you like this type of content, please subscribe. We've also got a Raptor build coming up pretty soon here. So if you're not just only here for EVs, we've got some more stuff coming for you. But thanks for watching.